The Great Island of Skansa is situated in the surge of the Northern Ocean and lies in the front of the river Vistula, which rises in the Sarmatian Mountains and flows into the Northern Ocean, separating Germania and Scythia. Here also there are said to be many small islands scattered round about. If wolves cross over to these islands when the sea is frozen, they are said to lose their sight. Thus, the land is not only inhospitable to man, but cruel even to wild beasts. The belief that Scandinavia was an island became widespread among classical historians during the first century and dominated descriptions of the north during the centuries that followed. The first real contact the Romans had with Scandinavia was during the campaigns under Emperor Augustus. The Emperor claimed, My fleet has sailed over the ocean from the mouth of the Rhine eastward, all the way to the land of the Cimbri, where no Roman before that time had reached, either by land or by sea. The Roman historian Publius Cornelius Tacitus presents ample new information on the north. He describes various tribes and what makes them exceptional. He mentions the former might of the Cimbri and a group of tribes that lived in what is today Schleswig-Holstein, Jutland and the Danish islands. Tacitus also gives an elaborate description of the Swedes. Before Scandinavians participated in large-scale raiding, colonization, conquest and trading, they were mostly farmers and the clans in the north waged wars against each other over territory and resources. The life of the inhabitants had hardly changed since the Latin Iron Age. The cultural expressions from the Roman Imperial period are amazingly homogenous in Scandinavia, the Netherlands and Northern Germany. Within this large area, the cultural winds were shifting both as a result of internal factors, as well as changing conditions on the continent. The Late Germanic Iron Age begins with the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the rise of the Goths, the Franks and the Lombards. Although without a written history of its own, Scandinavia in the 6th century was nevertheless known to have held quite a special position in the minds of the Germanic peoples, as the place from which many of them, or at least the royal family clans, claimed their origin. The Burgundians, the Goths, the Herulds and the Lombards claimed that their ancestors came from Scandinavia, and it is likely that the Vandals also had their original homeland there. The migrations and the upheaval in Central Europe had lessened somewhat, and free powers south of the north had emerged, the Merovingian Kingdom, the Saxons and the Slavic princedoms. North Germanic seafarers had begun to explore the waterways of Europe more intensively than before, and large parts of England had been conquered by them. Ornately carved helmets, found in the Swedish Upland, speak of a powerful warrior aristocracy, and they share many similarities with the Sutton Hu helmet of East Anglia. The Anglo-Saxon elite had extensive contacts with Swedish clans, and although most Anglo-Saxon chieftains had their origins in Northern Germany, the Netherlands and in Denmark, it is believed that Swedish noblemen were also part of the early Germanic ruling class of Britain. The brutal tribal warfare of Northern Germany and Scandinavia caused many clans to leave their homeland. Defeated Jutes, like Hengist and his brother Horsa, fled to Kent, while Geats, defeated by encroaching Swedes, moved to Yorkshire. It has also been suggested that East Anglia was settled by Geats at this time, bringing the traditions of Beowulf with them. The helmets, found in Sweden and England, have their obvious roots in the parade helmets of the late Roman Empire. They were functional pieces of battle equipment and symbols of their owner's power and prestige. In the 6th and 7th centuries, Upland and East Anglia lay at opposite ends of a cultural world which had its center in Scania and the Danish islands. There were lively contacts with Central Europe, the Scandinavians exported iron, fur, mercenaries and slaves. In return they acquired art and innovations, such as the stirrup. Cattle, pigs, sheep and goats were the main domestic animals, all of them introduced in Scandinavia with the arrival of agriculture thousands of years ago. They supplied meat, fat, tallow, hides and horn. Fishing played an important role in the rural economy, and in some regions the diet was dominated by cod and herring. In northern Norway, for example, fish is a much more reliable food source than grain. Oxen were used as draught animals, and sheep procured wool. Hens and geese were added to the stock during the Latin Iron Age, as were cats. Dogs were used for shepherding, hunting and as watchdogs. 
horses serve for warfare, riding and other transport purposes, but also for their meat. Osteological investigations show that horse flesh was an important part of the diet throughout the first millennium AD. The rural economy of late Iron Age Scandinavia was based on a kaleidoscope of interlinking occupations. Agriculture was only a part of it. Fishing, forestry, iron production and quarrying were emerging industries that contributed substantially to the tissue of Nordic society, as did crafts such as textile production, carpentry, bone and horn walking and various types of smithing. Meat was a seasonal product, as slaughtering was mainly done at the end of the grazing season. Cattle and sheep in October, pig in November and December. Preservation was vital and was done in a multitude of ways. Drying, smoking, salting, fermentation, freezing or in whey. In many places milk products held a role as basic food. Fresh milk was seen primarily as a raw material that had to be treated, coagulated into junket or fresh cheese. In Norway, the more rugged the coastline becomes in the north, the richer the marine life. In the late Iron Age, the export of high-protein fish to Central and Southern Europe began. This resulted in explosive growth along the Norwegian coast and made the region prosperous. Even today, fish is still one of the country's most important export items. Sea mammals such as whales, seals and walrus were important maritime resources. They supplied a lot of meat but also blubber, and their bones were used for various tools. One native Scandinavian animal was domesticated too, the reindeer. Reindeer pastoralism is a feature of the Sami people, supplying them with meat, milk and transport, as well as fur and antlers. Reindeer demand huge tracts of lands, such as are available in the tundras and forests of northern Scandinavia. The semi-nomadic Sami inhabited the vast wooden and mountainous areas of central and northern Scandinavia, as well as the inner fjord regions of northern Norway. The sedentary North Germanic agrarian population lived along the coast up to circa 70 degrees north. The Norse myth of the giant Skadi, an able Shia and archer, and her marriage to the fertility god Njord may be taken as an indication of the problematic relationship between Samis and the Scandinavian Germanic population. Wooden sheaths were common since the Neolithic, as were bone skates and frost nails for horses that pulled sleighs. Sea, rivers and lakes were the main arteries of traffic, and it was during the winter when they were frozen that people had a real opportunity to travel over land, to meet and hold markets, particularly on large lakes. A chieftain in Scandinavia, a Jarl, did not build castles or palaces, but huge wooden buildings where they would hold court, host feasts and conduct religious rituals. The society of Scandinavia in the 6th century was very similar to the societies of the continental Celtic and Germanic tribes during the time of Julius Caesar. While the continental clans had changed over the centuries due to Roman influence, the northern groups remained almost unchanged, as Roman influence on the Nordic society and culture was weak. This was a time when powerful kingdoms were beginning to form, an era of violent wars and merging together of tribes. The archaeological evidence points to the establishment of a new political structure all over Scandinavia between 500 and 600 AD. The time before the Viking Age, the Vandal period, was a time in which Scandinavia underwent enormous societal and material transformation. Legends preserve stories of great kings, heroes and warriors, and archaeology has revealed an elite culture of lavish treasure, gilded swords and helmets, and astounding ship burials. Cemeteries with non-cremated boat graves, found in central Sweden, are connected to the royal dynasty of the Svea, the Inglinga. In Old Uppsala, undoubtedly the seat of the Ingling dynasty, the boat graves found there are for both, females and males, while the graves found in Wendel and Walsgerde were arranged only for men. The finds show that Uppland was an important and powerful region, consistent with the saga's account of the Swedish kingdom. Genealogies and the knowledge of one's forefathers were vital in Wendel and Viking period Scandinavian society. Enumeration of genealogies and names is an old culture's formalized language in which every name conceals a complex of stories and events 
and every name, by necessity, invokes a series of associations and emotions. The Inglingatal poem lists 27 Swedish kings, along with details about their deaths and burial places. In Western Europe, the Merovingians gained supremacy over neighboring kingdoms by military conquest, networks of long-distance alliances and gift-giving. Their form of political and economic organization is reflected in the petty kingdoms of Scandinavia. Possibly the most important development in the 6th century was the emergence of a new class of warrior elites, whose power was based on three major factors – alliances, treasure and martial prowess. The society was becoming more hierarchical, with power more highly concentrated in fewer hands. Mythical tales and legends, together with the symbolic language of animal style, are the ideological articulation of this new warrior elite. By the 7th century Scandinavia had largely been taken over by four groups, the Danes, the Norwegians, the Swedes and the Geats. Iordanes was a Roman citizen of Gothic descent, living in Constantinople. He was a Byzantine bureaucrat under Emperor Justinian I. His work, Getica, written in 551 AD, gives a unique account of the tribes of Scandinavia in the Vandal period, 